Hello, welcome back to the channel. So, back to working on the Mustang. Um, when uh, I did the, the dash swap, found a few uh, drops of blood under the car. Looks like the steering rack was leaking and it's pretty old. Most likely some of the, um, the lines are probably cracking or something who knows so I figured well I don't really want to replace the power the, the steering rack or the, the lines and deal with more hydraulics and stuff like that so there's got to be a better way did a little bit of digging and uh, came up with this yep that's a wiring harness for the Mustang it's um how do I put it? We're getting rid of the power steering. We're gonna be putting a electronic steering rack. I'm gonna put one from a um, 2014. I know I could have done a Boss 302, but it's a lot of money and this was a smoking deal. Whatever. So, did some digging. The easiest thing to do, I, I know there's a video on YouTube that talks about how um, you can um, get a couple of plugs and extend some wires and put a fuse and some other crap. Props to the guy, He's, he did a really good job on the video, but yeah, there's a better way than that. Um, the power harness, it's got a lot of connectors on it initially. Uh, it comes with a bunch of uh, PCM connectors, a lot of other extra wiring and so forth. Uh, did a little bit of surgery, which involved removing all the um, PCM wires, but three wires. Three wires, right? Let's see. Let's see if I can turn it around and show you. So here's the harness. We removed a lot of wires, except the white, white, blue, and yellow. These wires go back to this little plug right here which goes to activate the power the the e pass or the electronic power steering. We got a nice plug that got, gives the power to the power steering to the to I mean to the the new rack. Uh, and all of that I mean I get a new beautiful alternator wire, a starter wire and everything. And then the nice thing about it is we get two fuses. Look at that. There's a fuse that goes to the alternator. There's a fuse that goes to the power steering. Look at that. I don't have to do any surgery on that. I don't have to build any wiring loom or anything like that. So the way this is going to work is first step. We're going to remove the power wire off of the, the car. Gonna, and then we're going to install this in there. After we install this wire harness, uh, we're going to make sure the car still starts. The then we're going to um, plug the old, the new e-pass into the, the plugs without actually installing it into the car, just to make sure that the, the rack I bought is actually good. And then after that, the second step is going to be swapping the power steering itself, the rack itself. It's only two bolts. Uh, I have a tubular key member, but I don't know if I have the hookup for the third bolt. The source I talked to said that I should be okay with just two bolts, so we'll be okay. And then, after that, I have to put a new belt on the car and remove all the the, the pump and the, the, the hoses and everything else. So, we got ourselves a new belt, shorter by about 30 inches, um, because um, I'm going to be removing all the pulleys on the left side of the engine. It's going to simplify the whole belt routing on the on the car. It's going to be nice. And uh, I don't, I'm, you know, shot in the dark on the actual belt size because um, I have a the part on a boost manifold with a supercharger. So I don't know exactly what size of the belt I need. Um, I'm going to try with this and see how close I can get. And then if not, AutoZone or Amazon or Riley's, I can order a new one and get in a couple of days. So we'll go from there. So first things first, let's get the, the wiring harness out of the car. Okay, so, quick.
quick uh, game plan on what needs to happen. I, as you can see, took the battery out. Uh, let's see what I need to disconnect so I can go through the, the whole steps with you. So, battery's disconnected. I know there's a lot of garbage in there. We'll deal with that later. And then this is the harness itself. All right. There is a... I connect this on the cable here. There's the alternator cable that I need to take out. Cool. Then uh, this itself, there is a cable that goes over there for the starter and all that stuff. And then there's this cable that I just took out. This is the, the power wire for the uh, junction box. And I think that should be it. So we'll get the alternator disconnected. Wherever that is, that right there. Oh, look at that nice, pretty re reflection. Okay, sorry, squirrel. So we'll get the alternator disconnected, and then I'll jack up the car. It's a little tight in here, but we should make it happen. And then uh, disconnect this power cable, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is out. That was a ground in here. Forgot to get it out. That sets up the ground to the car. Now we gotta get under the car and disconnect this from the starter. This should be another five minute job. Let's get the car jacked up. I might just go through the other side because it's easier to jack it up and whatnot. So let's get the car lifted. Okay. I think I have plenty of space to get under. Let's see if I can. Oh yeah! Look at all of that beautiful stuff just leaking out of it. That is toast. Yep, got fluid all over the place because of this shit. So yeah, it's gotta come out. It's gonna be fun taking all those bolts out and everything, but one step at a time. So, this harness comes here that I disconnected, and it goes in, hooks up to the uh, ground, whoa, ground on the block. And we have a 12 volt line for the starter. Oh man, this is good. So it looks like I don't even have to touch this. All right, so you need 13 mil for the starter, 15 mil for the ground. Starter's out. Let's get the ground out. Got those two disconnected. Let's see where we are with this. Hot damn. That was easy. Just gotta disconnect all these accessory bullshit. And then uh, harness is out. Let's see how long that's gonna take. Well, that didn't take long. Let's do a quick comparison of all the plugs that we have and see what we need to add, if we need to add anything. So, let's see. I got plus and minus uh, alternator wire. So there's a plus, a minus, an alternator wire, a ground, smart junction, and then a ground, and the positive for the starter. So let's go through this again. Positive, a negative, negative on the body, smart junction box. <clears throat> Looks like we got a starter with a ground to the body. 
which it looks like. Then we have another ground. So we'll probably just connect this somewhere. All right, and then this is the alternator wire, which by the looks of this, we're gonna have to separate from here, get it all out. And then we have a harness that's ready. So let's uh, modify the harness really quick and get this done. Adjusted the harness a little bit. Turns out I have all the plugs I need and not too many, but um, so let's kind of go through them and uh, do a quick um, tag of them or whatever you want to call them. So we'll start from the positive, then there's the negative, there's the ground on the body that goes by the strut tower, smart junction box, turns on the car electronics, and we got the starter and the ground on the uh, on the body. This is the wire, the ground wire, for the beautiful thing called E-Pass. Yep, it comes from here. It goes all the way to this bundle of joy right here. This is the alternator wire, and the E-Pass goes under the, the, end, under the car. You got power, and you have the activation. The only thing we're keeping, as I said, is these three wires. And then these three, we're gonna tap onto the ABS module. I'm gonna show you in a little bit when I put those into the car and I tap them, which color goes to with what. But that's it. Let's get it uh, mounted in the car. Uh, quick tip, the battery ends up being reversed. So the, 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 uh, the 12 volt now comes to the front of the car by the engine. The ground goes away from the car or away from the engine um, so let's get it mounted in the car and uh, see if we can get the car started at least So we got most of the wiring kind of pulled in there. Uh, we're gonna fish this down in a second. It's not a priority. Let's uh, hook up the, the starter and the ground on the starter. And then we'll uh, put the battery in and do some testing and whatnot. So let's do that. Okay, so readjusted a couple of things really quick, just so you can see. The ground from the harness comes here. I added the ground from the uh, E-Pass, comes on the other side. Uh, I connected all my accessory stuff over here. Uh, then we got the alternator wire going in there. It's nice and snug. Then we got these things are still loose for now. We're gonna have to connect those in a second and then uh, below uh, you can see the, the harness hanging out for the e-pass so next thing is I think we can put in the battery uh, we got everything else hooked up uh, or connected that we needed and so uh, we can go and uh, start the engine afterwards and hopefully um, no, uh, no fireworks show. So let's go ahead and put a battery in. <sighs> Got 
got a tiny bit of a problem. Well, just a hassle. We're gonna have to bend some stuff a little bit over here because uh, this is just a little bit too big for the battery. It doesn't stay on the battery too well and I mean I could probably just put it like that but I'm a little bit of a perfectionist so let's see if we can just bend it just a little bit to get it in. All right, so battery is connected. Let's see if the car wants to at least just let's power it on. Let's see if we can start it and not make a fire. Perfect. Perfect. Car started. So now, let's get the new steering rack wired. So we'll do that right now. All right, let's go again. There's three wires we gotta connect. White, white, blue, and the yellow. They go on the ABS module connector. So we got can plus, it's white and, white and blue. We got can minus, which is just white, and a yellow, which is for power. Power goes onto the harness over here, onto green with the red. We're gonna just splice it in. Uh, white and blue we're, is going to go on the white and green on the twisted pair over here. And then plain white is going to go on the pink with gray on that pair. Those are the two can wires. So these two are going to get spliced there. This one gets spliced here once again. White with blue goes with white and green. White goes with pink. So let's get that wired up. Connectors back. You can you can't even see the wires. They're over there. And see, can we do it that way? Yeah, there you go. You can see them. They're zip tied in there. Now we gotta put the intake man. Uh, the intake. Time to connect the e pass to the bundle of wires. All right, so let's uh jack up the car. A little bit and take the power steering rack out of its bag oh you're gonna laugh when you see how uh, the guys at LKQ decided to uh, package this stuff the UPS guy was like what the Fu Manchu is this so let's see how they uh, whether anything's damaged or whatnot so take a look Seriously, what the heck, LKQ? It's not even boxed up or anything. They just wrapped it up in some paper and just shipped it out. We'll find out right now if I have to call them tomorrow or not. I think I'm gonna talk with the guys from LKQ because this is garbage. But we're gonna test it just for kicks. All right, let's give it a try.
See what happens. First thing, we're gonna try and connect the wire, right? Negative Ghost Rider. There's two things. Either I did a bad wiring or I got it dead. Uh, power steering rack, so. <clears throat> Let's, we're gonna redo the wiring really quick. I'm gonna use some uh, heat things. We will see in a second and then we'll go from there. If not, I'm calling uh, LKQ. Oh, I'm calling them tomorrow regardless, but yeah. Yep, bad wiring. Those uh, tap-ins did not even pierce through the um, insulator. So we're gonna chop and use these nice uh, uh, heat connectors that I have. And then we're gonna reconnect everything and try it again. Guess what? Power steering rack sucks, it's broken. Uh, I gotta call the guys at LKQ because the, I don't even know where, Power steering rack is broken, it doesn't work. There's a chip of the housing that's literally just like sitting on the side that I put on over there. It's It's been bumped a bunch of times, so I'm not even gonna try and install it. I need to get, get the guys from LKQ just to send me a new one and hopefully package it properly. So um, stay tuned for the next episode when hopefully I get a new one and, and we try it again.